Hey there everyone, it's Will Gibbons Design here, and I haven't done a tutorial in a long time. I've got a brand new laptop, I don't have any uh, key shot installed on it yet, and I got an idea, I thought it would be fun to do a short tutorial for anyone who's never used KeyShot, never installed it before, and I'm going to run through the download and installation of KeyShot, and you don't even need to have a license, you can actually get a free demo from KeyShot.com, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to try to walk us through the download, installation, talk about the directory, setting up a few things uh, like font scaling and the preferences. We're going to be able to import a file. I'll tell you how to move it around, navigate the software. We'll quickly apply materials, change our lighting, and then take a screenshot when we're done. And uh, I'm going to try to do this in as short a time as possible, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to keyshot.com slash downloads. You're going to find the full installer here. And if you're on Windows, go ahead and give this a click. All right, so now that I've got the installer here, I'm going to run it. I've downloaded this installer, just double click it. And I'm going to speed this process up here. Great, so Keyshot has actually installed. We're going to go ahead and run Keyshot. And you'll notice this is really uh, quite large looking here. I actually have my laptop, which has a 4K display, high resolution display, plugged into a 1080p monitor. So we've got some crazy font scaling going on, and this is why we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Now we have to get Keyshot licensed on this machine, so I have to go ahead and choose Try a Watermark Free 14-Day Demo License. We'll hit Next. I'm going to zip through this next part. All right, now before we actually launch Keyshot, I want to share with you the directory really quickly. And the directory, we actually have a shortcut to Keyshot 8 resources on our desktop created by the installer. If I open it up, it's going to give us the folders that are in the Keyshot 8 directory. So that would include a few other little settings. We've got our license file. This will be replaced eventually with the license that you purchase, um, assuming you do. And this is just our temporary license that will expire after 14 days on our trial. So again, this is where all Keyshot stuff is stored. And if you want to see the full path, uh, or if you want to browse to it, you're going to need to go into your folder, uh, your computer, C drive, users, your personal drive, your documents, and then you see Keyshot 8. So this is the full path if you need to reference it here. Okay, let's launch Keyshot using the shortcut created by the installer. And the first thing I notice is that the scaling seems to be off here. So I'm going to go to uh, Edit Preferences. I am on a PC. The preferences will be under uh, File if you're on a Mac. And then uh, I'm finding this or looking for this high DPI support here. This is because I am on a laptop with a 4K display, but I'm plugged into a cheap 1080p monitor, so some weird scaling happens. And then we also need to go to Preferences one more time and find the font size. I'm going to drop mine from 16 down to 9, which I think is preferable. This does not require a restart. Now you can see the icons and the text are the appropriate size. We've got our uh, welcome window. We're going to close that right now. And what I want to do is talk about one other uh, preference item. If we go into Edit Preferences, there are some things I like to adjust or set up as soon as I install Keyshot. And one of them is under uh, General. I like to change my screenshot from JPEG format to PNG. This allows for alpha transparency. So if you want to get transparent backgrounds with your renderings, uh, when you just take a screenshot, the screenshot button is in the Keyshot user interface on the bottom right. You could check this include alpha transparency button. I also want to turn off save a camera with each screenshot. I usually take screenshots to document my work, not to set up cameras. All right, and then um, there are a few goodies here. If you want to change how often you get save reminders, maybe every hour instead of every 30 minutes, that can be nice. Um, I'll do a separate video running through all these preference items in here as well. Um, but for now, we're going to go ahead and just hit Save Changes. And let's go ahead and set up our interface. So our workspaces, we want to click on this drop-down button and change it to Default. 
And then from here, what we're going to do is go into full screen mode. And I want to change my CPU usage to something less than 100%. Uh, depending on how powerful your machine is, you will see more or fewer cores than you see here on mine. Again, it's all dependent on the processor you're using. More cores is generally better for Keyshot. And if we reduce this by one or two cores, it's actually going to save some uh, background processing power for whatever else you're running on your computer. Like I'm recording my screen right now, and if you're running a couple other applications, you may want to reduce the core usage, and that's going to give Keyshot a little more stability overall. Now across the top, we have our ribbon. We have our toolbar across the bottom. We have our project panel on the right. This is where we make changes to the things in our scene. And then we have our library panel on the left. And then right in the center, this gray area, this is called our real-time view. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is take a look at importing. So if I go to grab a model, which I have on my desktop, I'm gonna be using a step file today I downloaded from the website GrabCAD. To show you what GrabCAD is, uh, I went to GrabCAD's library. It's a large collection of free CAD models. And I searched drywall saw. And I came across this cool model by Tim Charlesworth. And it's a nice, simple model. Um, and we can download it. It looks like it was originally created uh, maybe an Autodesk inventor, but it's a step file, which is a nice common format. So I'm going to grab that file and drag it right into my desktop. And again, I'll do a separate video on import settings, but for now the default will work for us. So let's go ahead and hit import. And our saw imports, but it's on its side and I'd like to rotate it and uh, move it into a different position. And before we can do that, let's talk about navigation. So if you left click and drag, it moves our camera around the center of our scene or the middle of our model. This is called tumble. So we're not actually moving the model yet, we're just moving our camera. If you click your middle mouse button and drag left to right, so middle mouse could be a separate button or it could just be the scroll wheel like it is on mine. This is pan, moves left to right, up and down. And then finally, if you scroll your mouse wheel in and out, this is going to be dolly. This moves the camera further away or closer to our model. So now that we've got some basic navigation covered, let's talk about rotating this model into the correct location. So we see the model in the scenes, um, sorry, the, um, the, uh, so if we move on over to the scene tree, it's going to display our model at the very top level. And all the parts can be uh, looked at by clicking that uh, plus sign. You can select individual items by clicking on them. But for now, we just want to grab the entire model so we'll click on the drywall saw and it turns blue we want to go to the position sub tab down below there and click on the move tool button and here we get our move tool so if we change our camera to look at the red circle and hover over it we can start to rotate click and drag and then hold shift to snap in 15 degree increments a little too far there whoops all right and now if i want to snap it to the ground because right now if we look our saw is intersecting our shadow, that's no good. We click snap to ground, and then you can see the lowest part of the model is now sitting on the ground plane. Uh, we wanna make it look like the saw is naturally sitting on the surface or the ground, so we're gonna rotate it by grabbing the green circle and starting to rotate. Now, if we move our mouse a little further from that center, we can get some finer control. We're gonna rotate this manually up just a little bit, and then we're going to drag it down using the blue arrow until it looks like it's actually sitting on that ground plane. Good enough. All right, and then we'll hit the green checkbox. Now let's talk about applying some basic materials. For the saw blade, I'm going to want probably like a, a stainless steel, maybe something with some uh, brushed marks. So we could go searching through all of Keyshot's uh, more than 500 materials, but what I want to do is just use the search bar and I'm going to search stainless. And now we are looking at all of the stainless options. Now we can't see what they're actually called until we click on this list view button. And now we can see the description and it looks like I want the stainless steel brushed fine 90 degrees. And if I drag this, 
we can see it looks like we've got some brush marks going left to right. That's exactly what I want. Now for the uh, plastic part of the handle, let's search for a hard, um, you know what, uh, we could finish with the word plastic, but to be honest, as you type in keywords, Keyshot's gonna narrow down your search, and this is good enough for me. So I just want this hard, rough plastic blue. And if I drag that on, you can see it applies to all those parts that were colored red to begin with. That's pretty cool. And then for the rubber, I want to search again for rubber, and I'll find this black rubber and put it on the handle, the grippy part, and there we go. Now, let's say this grippy black plastic is a little too dark. Um, we can actually change that. We can do so by double clicking on it. Before I go about changing the color though, let's do one last thing. Our, um, our environment's looking very gray and kind of dull. And that's because we're using the startup environment. If we go to our library of environments and we find something with more contrast, one of these panels environments, for example, if I try the two panels tilted, I'll double click it and it is applied to my scene. And I like this quite a bit more. Um, I'm not so much worried about this background. What I'm actually looking at is the lighting on and the reflections on the model itself. This looks much more appealing. And so, um, now that I've got my lighting set up, I'm going to adjust the color of that rubber a little bit, like I said. So by double clicking it, we see its material properties on the right hand side. Click on the diffuse color swatch and find the um, color picker, grab that little dot and just drag it up a little bit. That'll make it a little less dark, right? And then we'll go ahead and hit okay. And for the blue handle, I wanna change that too. So if I double click it, we'll see that this is a plastic material. And if we find the blue color swatch, we can do the same thing. We can move this uh, little dot to kind of adjust the overall color. Now, the last thing I wanna address is our background. Our background is kind of distracting, showing our lighting environment. If we go to our environment tab within the project panel, we can go to our background section and we can make a change here. What I want to do is not show my lighting environment, but show a solid color. And while white's nice, I actually want something a little bit juicier, a little more marketing style. So I'm going to click on this white box and I'm going to use the color picker to pull a color off of my model. So wherever you click the eyedropper tool, it will sample that color. So I want a light blue so I can click on the blue on the handle and then hit OK. And it, actually, if we don't want this exact shade of blue, maybe I want to go something a little bit darker or maybe a little bit lighter, you know, whatever your preference might be. I think that looks good. And uh, finally, what I wanna do is actually take a final screenshot. Now, you'll see there's some fuzzy stuff going on here, right? This is noise. Uh, the longer Keyshot sits, the longer it will render and the less noisy it will look. Now, this is a demo, so there is a cap on the number of samples that it will render up to, and this is getting into some of the technical stuff. But if I let this sit a little bit longer, that noise should mostly go away. And once I'm happy with it, I'm going to find my screenshot button on the bottom right hand of my uh, key shot and I'll click on it. And it might take a second here. I think it's just because my software is recording the screen. And sure enough, you can see the screenshot was saved to my renderings folder. So remember our directory we talked about earlier, Keyshot directory. If we go back inside there into our renderings folder, we'll see that we have indeed the rendering I just created. If I click on it, we can take a look. There we go. Very cool. And if I want, I can throw this on my desktop so I can share it with all my friends. So that's gonna to conclude to today's tutorial. I just wanted to do this kind of quick and dirty. Like I said, new laptop, fresh installation. I wanted to share with anyone who maybe has never used Keyshot and wanted to give it a try, show them how to get up and running. Um, there will be plenty of other tutorials on my website that show much more in-depth uh, um, tutorials on how to create more advanced things and customize Keyshot and all that stuff. So if this was at all helpful, please subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell so you get the notifications when I upload new content, new tutorials, 
And finally, if you have any specific questions uh, or uh, about things I might have skipped over in this, comment down below and I will address them. And if you have suggestions or requests for future tutorials, put those comments and suggestions down below in the um, comment section and I will try to make it happen. Thanks for rendering with me today and I will see you next time.